Hello and welcome to Like Maria. Today I'm going to spend just five minutes telling you about old Hollywood versus new Hollywood. So get prepared to learn some facts. Okay, so when we're talking about old Hollywood, we're talking about the period of sort of the 1920s to the 1950s, which was a period of time in Hollywood which was dominated by the studio system. At that time, there were eight big studios, the big five and the little three. And the key thing about these studios is that they were vertically integrated. They were able to produce films, distribute films and even show them at their own cinemas. These eight studios were so successful that they were responsible for distributing 95% of the films that were watched in US cinemas at the time. Each studio had a particular style and this style meant that they were distinctive but it also helped them to cut costs so sometimes sets might be recycled, costumes might be recycled and you'd see the same actors popping up again and again. Actors, producers, directors, they were all under contract to these studios so they couldn't work for other people if that's what they decided to do. Peak production was in the 1940s where they produced a huge amount of mass entertainment for large audiences. Now things began to change post-World War II. There was a court ruling which meant that studios could no longer just block book their own films into cinemas. But also life was changing. So post-war families were having more children so therefore they wanted to stay at home with their families. They had different leisure activities. Maybe the formulaic approach to film production had also become a little bit stale. And of course, we get the mass arrival of television sets within the home. So all of these things meant that Hollywood had to change. Cut to the 1960s, where things start to get really experimental and films are made outside of the studio system with independent funders, a wider range of producers and some unknown directors at the time taking control. Directors were more important than ever before. They were younger and so had a connection with younger audiences. They were influenced by Europe and the new wave movements that had happened there. They made links to popular culture and they offered psychological insight through their characters and their storylines. Now you might be thinking that directors from the Hollywood studio system are just as important and there are key directors that work within that system but were able to carve out their own individuality and I'm thinking particularly of Alfred Hitchcock there. However on the whole directors during the studio system were not that important and it was the producer that really controlled everything. Often directors were treated the same as anyone else who was under contract. It was the producer that made the decisions and held the purse strings. We also think of the studio system as giving us a number of highly acclaimed and very beautiful actors and actresses. Often we see photographs of stars from that time with beautiful lighting and looking particularly glamorous. But New Hollywood also brought us a number of really talented actors and actresses who went on to make their mark on the film world. These actors often favoured method acting, like Jack Nicholson in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and sometimes these actors turned director, for example, Dennis Hopper with Easy Rider. Now, if you've seen Easy Rider, you'll know a section of the film is all about drug taking, and this gives us a clue as to other changes that happened within the new Hollywood period, particularly in that the production code started to break down, and so filmmakers were freer to show content that previously would not have been allowed. So, for example, in New Hollywood, we get more sexual content, more violence and more challenging of authority and raising questions about establishments of power. This also reflected what was going on in wider society at the time and the 1960s were a decade full of protest and people working for change. We've got groups campaigning for civil rights, women's rights, gay rights and there's more focus on things like environmentalism at this time as well. One of the movements that gained a lot of attention was the anti-war movement which was protesting against America's involvement in the war in Vietnam. So the 1960s were a time when people felt dissatisfied but they were also a time of huge creativity and obviously we see this new period in film but also there was an explosion of new and exciting music as well. 
So by the time the 1970s rolled around, old Hollywood knew that it needed to change. And this is where we start to see the rise of the blockbuster and the establishment of household names like Steven Spielberg and Stanley Kubrick. As is the case today, there was still a place for experimental and unusual independent films. But alongside that, we had these big blockbusters, which provided spectacle on screen, a big soundtracks and less politically challenging messages. And these films got audiences going back to the cinema and ensured that the studios were once again making money. OK, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope that's helped you revise. See you again soon. Bye bye.